question is that this bill be now read a second time, and I call the member for Barton. Uh, thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Me Mr. Deputy Speaker, I rise on behalf of the Labor Party to support this bill. I move the amendment circulated in my name. Uh, which is asking the House to firstly note that the paid parental leave scheme helps close, close the gender pay gap by allowing mothers and fathers to look after their children in, most, in the most critical years of their development while staying in the workforce, and two, calls on the government to recognise the importance of equality for women and access to leave for families by a, guaranteeing it will not make any cuts to the paid parental leave, uh, b, increasing paid family violence leave, and c, working with business to close the gender pay gap. Australia's National Paid Parental Leave Scheme is a proud Labor legacy. Introduced by the Labor government, now in, in its eighth year, commencing on 1 January 2011. When the Paid Parental Leave Scheme was introduced, Australia was one of the only two OECD countries without a national scheme, the United States being the other. The purpose of the paid parental leave scheme is to provide financial support to primary carers of newborn and newly adopted children in order to firstly allow those carers to take time off work to care for the child after the child's birth or adoption and to enhance the health and development of birth mothers and children three, enable women to continue to participate in the workforce, and four, promote equality between men and women and the balance between work and family life. It provides two payments, parental leave pay and dad and partner pay. This includes 18 weeks of payment for the primary carer who can be either parent at a rate based on the national minimum wage of $740.60 per week. This comes to a total of $13,330.80. As well as partners can also access two weeks of dad and partner pay at the same rate, worth $1,481.20. Paid parental leave signals to employers, employers and the Australian community that parents taking time out of the paid workforce to care for a child is part of the usual course of life. It also enables participation of women in the workforce. A high workforce participation rate is important in the context of an ageing population and helps to address the gender pay gap, particularly for those women on low and middle incomes who have less access to employer-funded parental leave. Almost 1,000 150,000 parents a year benefit from, benefit from the Australia's Paid Parental Leave Scheme, which was introduced, as I said, by Labor. Nearly half of all new mothers benefit from the, nat from the National Paid Parental Leave Scheme. Parents, mothers or fathers shouldn't have to sacrifice their career or their career progression simply because they want to look after their children in the most formative and critical years of their development. Pay parental leave plans to an important plans an important role in closing the gender pay gap. We know that women are usually the primary carers of children, but we need to make sure that men are supported, empowered and encouraged to take more time caring if we are going to close the gender pay gap. I know that one of my colleagues will be speaking about that, the member for Jagger Jagger, in just a moment. In August, KPMG released a report which found that stubborn gender stereotypes continue to harm the carers, careers of women, especially those who opt to care for children and elderly family members. The gender pay gap remains a problem in Australia. Women in Australia still earn 14 per cent less than men on average. It is a fact that the gender pay gap in Australia has remained stubbornly high over the past two decades with any minor changes being widely attributed to the ending of the mining boom. Closing the gender pay gap requires fundamental cultural change and it, requ it requires general le genuine leadership. It requires actually acknowledging that there is a gap. I note the Treasurer's recent contention in question time on 9 September 2019 that the gender pay gap has closed. It says to me that the Treasurer has absolutely no idea about the gender pay gap and it's completely out of touch from reality. 
Labor, on the other hand, Mr. Deputy Speaker, has a proud record of fighting for equal pay for all Australians. When we were last in government, this included ensuring business with more than 100 employees prepare and lodge a report containing information relating to gender equality indicators. Labor also delivered funding to support the equal pay case for social and community service workers, delivering pay rises to 150,000 workers. <clears throat> the Morrison government, on the other hand, after six years, still does not have a genuine or substantive reform to close the gender pay gap. If the Treasurer and the Prime Minister were genuinely serious about fixing the gender pay gap, they would oppose cuts to penalty rates. The vast majority of workers who have their, their penalty rates cuts, cut will be women. The cuts to penalty rates are exacerbating the gender pay gap, as well as making it harder for women to pay the rent and cover the bills. Paid parental leave also allows mothers and fathers to be able to look after their children in their most critical developmental years. Not only, without sacrifice, not, not only without sacrificing career progression or ability to work, but also to be able to do so without eating into their savings. Sh parents should be able to care for their children as well as make ends meet. We know that families are doing it tough, especially young families, and yet the government ha has absolutely no plan to help them. The cost of living is going up, and our young people are wondering how if they how or if they will start to support a family. This month, the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare released a report which painted a very anxious and, an un and, un and uncertain future for younger Australians. The report showed that this, and this shouldn't come as any surprise, except maybe to the government, who seems oblivious to the struggles of everyday Australians, that home ownership is more out of reach for younger Australians than ever before, and one million Australians are li now living in housing stress. But there is little wonder why our young people are struggling to own their own home. It is not only because housing prices continue to soar. It is not only because they haven't seen a pay rise in so long, that wages are stagnant, and that they are spending more and more of their income on rent. But our young people are also finding it harder and harder to get a job. Youth unemployment is more than double the national average. According to the Australian Institute of Welfare and Health and Welfare report, new apprenticeships are the lowest in two decades. And many Australians, especially young Australians, are finding that when they do find a job, they're simply not receiving enough hours to, at work to get by. In fact, almost one in five, or, one, or over 130 New Start recipients, do have a job, but do not receive either enough hours or income to get them off the payment. I, want to, I also want to take this opportunity, Mr. Deputy Speaker, to talk about the importance of domestic violence paid leave, because when we are talking about the gender gap in the workplace, we cannot, cannot ignore the significance of the pre prevalence of family violence and how it impacts on women in the workforce. It is especially relevant today in light of the comments made by the government's newly anointed Deputy Chair of the Family Law Inquiry, Senator Hanson. Let me say these comments, which seek to dismiss and cast doubt on women experiencing family violence, are unacceptable. It's up to the government to explain how it can possibly support an inquiry whose deputy chair doesn't even acknowledge the prevalence and the gendered nature of family violence. We know about the fear, anxiety and uncertainty of leaving a violent and abusive relationship. When should I leave? How will I leave? Will I keep my job? How will I pay for things? One, no one should have to make these heartbreaking choices between two fears, the fear for their safety and the fear for their livelihoods. Family and domestic violence is a leading cause of death, disability and illness among women aged between 15 and 44 years in Australia. Two out of every three women who experience domestic and family violence are in the workforce. 
The workforce is an important component of the family violence policy area. We know that one of the most dangerous times for a woman is when she is leaving a violent relationship. She will need to work out a time to leave. She will need to find a new place to stay. She may have children and she will need to ensure her children have a place to stay and their education is secure. She may need to pre prepare to for and attend court to seek a protection order. She may need to attend the police. She may need to seek help, um, seek treatment for her injuries. But all of this can be take a lot of time, effort and resources. It is essentially turning your world on its head. It can be costly, both financially and mentally. This is a dangerous and incredibly anxious and stressful time. We acknowledge that last year this parliament passed five days unpaid family violence leave. Labor said it back then and we reiterate our position now. This is not good enough. We are calling for 10 days paid domestic violence leave. This will, bill will improve the paid parental leave work tests by extending eligibility for women to work, who work in dangerous occupations or who have irregular employment. The bill will enable more working parents to be eligible for paid parental leave by expanding the work test to include two parent groups. <coughs> women who are unable to continue. Thank you. Women who are unable to continue their job because of the hazardous nature of their employment with no safe job alternatives. And secondly, mothers who work gap who work, who, who, who mothers with a work gap greater than eight weeks between two working days during the work test period. Currently, to meet the paid parental leave work test, a parent must have worked 330 hours across 10 of the 30 months before the child's birth. And a parent can only have a break of up to eight weeks between two working day, of two, of, between two working days during this period. This bill changes the work test in two ways. Firstly, for pregnant women in unsafe jobs, such as jockeys, the work test will be moved to the 30-month period before the pregnant woman ceases work. This will mean that mothers who need to finish work earlier because of the occupational hazard hazards will not be disadvantaged by the work test. But secondly, for women with irregular work patterns, such as a casual teacher, the permissible break in the 30-month period will be, will be extended to 12 weeks between the two working days. <coughs> These changes will apply to parents claiming for parental leave for a child who is born on or after 1 January 2020. These changes will enable the extra 180 mothers to receive paid parental leave each year, according to the government. However, these changes have been very slow in coming, and too many Australian women and their, and their, their families have missed out on the benefits of paid parental leave as a result. In 20, 2013, the Australian Jockeys Association publicly identified the problem and called on the Abbott government to fix its legislation. The community has been came campaigning for these changes for many years. Labor supports the changes in the bill. We hope they will enable more women to consider careers and roles historically dominated by men. The paid parental leave scheme is a proud Labor legacy. We will always support improvements to it that increases support for parents who need it. We will always support improvements that close the gender gap and make it easier for young parents to raise and care for their families. <coughs> but the reality is that young families are doing it tough and they are right to ask why doesn't the Prime Minister and his Liberal National Government have a plan? Why doesn't he have an agenda or a vision to make things easier for young families? 
The Prime Minister is more obsessed with devising new ways to humiliate, harass the proud younger Australians while simply trying to enter the workforce and build a life for their families. Last week, this out-of-touch government introduced legislation to pursue its ideologically driven, ineffective, indiscriminate and very expensive cashless card, which will make it more difficult for young people trying to re-enter the workforce to purchase essential items and basics at affordable prices. Last week, this out-of-touch government introduced legislation to force young people trying to enter the workforce eat more into their savings before they can access income support. And last week, this out-of-touch government introduced legislation to make it more difficult for single parents to access education entry supplement to undertake further study. This Prime Minister is obsessed with urine tests, saliva swabs and cashless cards, and young Australians and their families are right to ask themselves. Where is the evidence to support these policies? How will this help me find a job? How will it help me pay the bills? How will this make things easier to raise and build a good and a healthy life for my family? Why isn't this government doing anything to stimulate a weak economy and that is, yet, that is only getting weaker? And finally, Mr Deputy Speaker, what is the point? What is the point of the Morrison government? This Prime Minister and his Liberal National Government and their refusal to stimulate the economy is creating an economic environment that is making it so difficult for young Australians to raise and build a life for their families. Of course, Labor supports this bill. As I said, it is part of a proud Labor legacy. But there is much more that needs to be done. Why, which is why Labor has moved a second reading amendment calling for the government to guarantee it will not make any cuts to the paid parental leave, increase the paid family violence leave and finally work with business cl to close the gender pay gap. The government has absolutely no reason not to support this amendment and I commend it to the House. I thank the member for Barton. Is the amendment seconded? The member for Fremantle. 